Example 12, hoist in the crate from section 9.4, Newton's second law for rotational motion about a fixed axis. Example says the combined moment of inertia of the dual pulley is 50.0 kilograms per meter squared. The crate weighs 4,420 newtons. A tension of 2,150 newtons is maintained in the cable attached to the motor. Find the angular acceleration of the dual pulley. All right. So we have this nice picture given to us of the motor, the dual pulley, and the crate. And the thing to note about a dual pulley is that it has two different radii. So notice uh, attached to the motor it has a larger radii, which down here is labeled as 0.6 meters. And the crate is connected to a smaller part of the pulley. Uh, where it is 0.2 meters. And this can give mechanical advantage by having two different radii here if you adjust the relative torques of it. So we want to find the angular acceleration of the dual pulley. And it's telling us these forces. So if we're thinking about forces and angular acceleration, that gets me starting to think about torque, because torque is forces that are acting in a way to cause a rotation and cause an angular acceleration. So let's take a look at all the different forces that we have here. Well, we have on the pulley, it feels a tension from the motor that pulls it, right? That's T1. It also feels a tension from the crate it's supporting. That's T2. Notice because the pulley has two different radii, these tensions are not the same. They're two different tensions. You can think of it as two separate cables. Other forces, we have the weight of the pulley itself. And then we have the uh, support of the pulley, right, that is going up and out on this support point. Then we could also look at the crate and note that the crate has its weight that's acting down and it's tension that's pulling up and is being uh, accelerated upward. All right, so with this in mind, let's get to Newton's second law, because that's our favorite approach. Anytime we have problems that involve forces, we really want Newton's second law. So first, if we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction on our crate, right, we have T2 prime that's going up, and mg, the weight of the crate, going down. And that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the vertical direction, because the crate is being lifted in this instance by the pulley and the motor. Great, so tension positive, the weight of the crate, mg, is negative, is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. We could also then look at the pulley and the torques that are acting on the pulley. So if we place the axis of rotation right at the center of the pulley, which is a good point, that will cancel out. That means there won't be any torque due to the weight of the pulley, as well as the support of the pulley P, because those are acting right at the axis at the center of the pulley. So the lever arm for them is zero, and they don't have torque. Then the only torques acting on our pulley are tension one that's pulling on it, at this lever arm, L1, and tension two, which is also slightly offset from the axis at L2. So we write those up here. The torques, torque due to tension one is tension one times L1. The torque due to tension two is tension two times L2. We also have to consider the sign, and tension one is pulling the pulley in this counterclockwise direction, which we've defined as the direction of positive torque versus tension two is pulling it in the opposite direction, which is the clockwise direction. So that is a negative torque, and that's why we have the negative sign there. That's equal to the moment of inertia I times alpha, our angular acceleration. And what we can note here is that even though T1 and T2 are not equal, because they're at different radii, think of them as different cables, the tension two that's acting on the crate is the same as the tension two 
that's acting on the pulley. Those are equal in magnitude. So we can solve this equation on the left for T2 and plug it into this equation for torque. Let's take a look at that. So we have torque of due to tension one minus the torque due to tension two, where we've plugged in for tension two is mg plus may, and that's equal to the rotational moment of inertia i times alpha. The a sub y here is the tangential acceleration of the pulley. So we could write it in terms of the angular acceleration of the pulley if we take the uh, radial distance r is l2 times the angular acceleration. So we'll fill that in here. So that we instead of subtracting by ma, it'll be by m times l2 times alpha. And now we've eliminated uh, one of our unknowns, right? Because we're ultimately trying to solve for this angular acceleration alpha, and we don't know what a sub y is. So if we can write them both in terms of alpha, that's great. So what we can do now is we want to go ahead and distribute out this L2 to both of these terms. And then we'll get both of our alphas onto the right side of the equation. So I'd have T1 L1 minus, I'm also going to factor, distribute out that minus sign. So Mg times L2. It's really easy to miss that L2. And then minus m l2 squared times alpha is equal to i times alpha. So now all I need to do is add this to the other side, and then I can factor out the alpha and divide by everything else. So I'd have alpha, oops, alpha times this, uh, i plus everything besides the alpha here, so m l2 squared. Perfect. And then, uh, like I said, I can divide this to the other side. So I'll divide everything that's left over here by that in parentheses. And that is just what's shown right here that we have torque due to tension one, so tension one times L1 minus mass times G times L2 divided by the moment of inertia I plus M times L2 squared. And when we fill in all of those numbers, which are all things that we know, we can get the angular acceleration as 6.3 radians per second squared. So this is a very involved example. It highlights how we can use the balance of forces and the balance of torques, even when we have an acceleration, when it's non-equilibrium, we can just use Newton's second law version, say Newton's second law equal now to mass times acceleration. Not that the net force is equal to zero, but net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And the net torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration, I alpha. So that gives you an example of Newton's second law for rotational motion in action.